Hey, look, you put the camera on me. I want to say uh, Chris looks like Tommy Lee Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> tall Tommy Lee Davidson. <laughs> I want to start with these guys. I mean, we all have a connection, you know, uh, to this city, uh, to each other in some kind of way. At least for me, it's funny being in this scenario now after, you know, moving on to Miami from this town and then coming back in a different capacity, but seeing how everybody has been successful in their own ways. That's what I'm most interested in. And, and just from you guys, I mean, where was the start? Well, I mean, you know, the start for me, you know, I'm gonna I'm get to the point where I am today and sitting here with y'all being in this town. Um, but obviously my start comes from a small city in Ohio, you know, and uh, everywhere I go, I, I talk about being from Akron and, and trying to give inspiration to kids and the youth and people of that nature. And then when you're able to become successful, you meet people in life that kind of help motivate you and inspire you. And you never know why people are putting into your life until you actually get around them. And it puts me in this position today where I'm sitting with two of the greatest guys that I've you know, ever encountered with, spun, spent time with, done things obviously that people know about and some things that people don't know about, but how we just collectively inspired each other. And then you sit back and you just say, I'm truly blessed. And you know, you're at this table right now. I just like to say, just based off your attire, you're like the Lawrence Fishburne <laughs> <laughs> interviewing. Uh, I'm just gonna preface with that, and then I'm just gonna go into, uh, you know, for me, um, for for me, like, I, well, I mean, how how we all got here was like, when you were here, we were all just kind of admiring the fact that you were incredible at your craft and. Um, and what you brought to the city, you know, you brought that sort of that that franchise feel to to, to our city, and um, and I always had a great admiration for you. And then you know, to meet you, you're an, you're you're an incredible person. The, I mean, that's that's kind of our story. I, I unfortunately didn't really get involved as much in the Raptors or basketball element when when we first met. I wish I was. And then with Braun, I think for me it was it was kind of just the like ascending at at similar times and. I think one of the most pivotal moments for me in my career was was when when you showed up to the So Far Gone party in in Toronto. That prominent marriage between like sports and entertainment right. and it was really big for us. And then from there, I mean, not to be like like overly sentimental, but you know, you've obviously just been uh, uh, we're brothers and we're friends, but you're one of the biggest inspirations period in life i think for anybody that like is is into like dominating and just being overwhelmingly incredible at, at what they do so i mean that's kind of how we're all here i guess is that good enough it's pretty good all right <laughs> <laughs> you, you sold it pretty good bro okay all right well i mean i guess i'll just talk with my first experience with you guys uh Brian, it was, we played each other. We ran into each other like three times over the course of a summer in uh, 2001. 2001. Yeah, 2001. And I had, the first one was in AB City Camp. And I didn't know who you were, but I knew your name. And uh, you just start killing some guy from Ohio. And he was like, I'm gonna check that guy. He was super adamant about guarding you. And uh, I just remember, yeah, sure, whatever. By the end of the game, I'm asking, who is this guy? And somebody said, oh, that's LeBron James. And, you know, it kind of started off from there. We played AAU against each other a couple times. And I mean, right off the bat, you kind of know the face that you're going to see for a long time. And for me, I was just trying to aspire to be like we all were right. and uh, attaining that top level. And then, I mean, it's crazy how kind of things come around and, you know, being able to play with you, uh, being in the same draft class. and. You know, having you as one of those guys to push me every day, because when I was here, kind of like what Drake was alluding to, that was like one of my inner passions was to, you know, be the level that you were at, you know, because as a player, I wanted that as well. And I felt that I should be in that conversation. Yeah, yeah. That's what drove me. Uh, and you know, Drake is funny, bro. <laughs> I mean, like, like you say, in, in, in the city at that time, I mean, it just was kind of 
hanging out and everybody was just around, you know, and, and, and it didn't feel special or it didn't, I mean, we were just happy to be hanging out. I know I was. I mean, for me, it was just nice to be able to do other things, to go to parties, to hear records or to hear people doing their thing, to get away from basketball, mm -hmm. you know, and at the time, yeah, it seemed so unattainable, especially for a Canadian artist. Not that you're a Canadian artist, you know. No, hundred percent. But you know, it it, it kind of was a a negative connotation at the uh, time, yeah, was, you know. And it was kind of it's kind of a thing that puts you in a box, and it's so crazy just to see you do so many great things. Do you remember how you know each step that you made on the way, or is it kind of just some blur that you just blink and then you're here? It's been a journey. You know, um, and it's been incredible to do it this way. I guess the further we get, the more you forget the early stages. Even even when you talk about just being like, you were you know you were not from here, but you were a Canadian basketball player, right? Yeah. You know, so <laughs> it's just it was it's tough to feel big. It's tough to feel. There was a time where it was really it was it was really tough to feel like we could ever transcend that so like this that actual literal border it was tough to get over that border now i think we've developed like a whole new monster over the years i think we probably have some of the most passionate prideful fans you know we have a city that is so proud and we have like a, a bunch of people that are you know beyond die hard for not only basketball but just for like what everything that the city stands for for sure toronto is one of the the only place that no matter where i go in the world i meet somebody from toronto yeah everywhere i go and they'll always they're tell not, you that they're crazy. from there and yeah. they'll always draw the parallel like oh i'm from toronto and they'll look at you like recognize me because we share that bond in life so I think as a city, we've all been on that journey for a long time. And I think maybe in the last, um, I mean, obviously, I think, it, I think it started with Vince. I think it graduated to you. And then I think now we've gotten to a place where we've even created stars, you know, guys that have been on the team that maybe have gone to other teams after and wouldn't be stars, but they were stars here or they felt like stars here. I think that now we've gotten to a point where if we were to ever get at this stage in basketball, that thing, you know, that, you know, that thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if we were to ever get that guy, <laughs> if you ever had a, you know, but honestly though, not, not joking around, but if you ever had a LeBron that came here and played, I think you would see something that you've never seen before. You know, yeah. the city is so ap appreciative of the efforts put forth so it is a special place in that regard. I think that um, people come here and you definitely, you know, I, I know there's, it's the winter and the taxes and all that stuff, but you, I think the love, you gotta, you gotta feel sure. it. And sure. that's one of the things I definitely felt. And, and it's funny cause seeing me, you know, being able to play with a guy like Vince Carter, cause that's what we're here for. What did Vince Carter mean to you as a basketball player? Because yeah. I know, like, for me, you know, Vince Sanity, yeah. half man, half amazing. Half man, half we can amazing. keep going all yeah. day. But, like, what was it about Vince Carter that kind of, you know, inspired you See, as a basketball so, player? So, I mean, I've been watching Vince since he was in high school. You know, even as a young kid and, um, you know, watching him in a McDonald's game. Obviously, I followed him. I mean, I was a huge, I wanted to go to North Carolina at the time. So him going to Carolina, it was like, okay. You know, watching Ed Cota throwing the lobs to him with him and Antoine Jameson and, and all those guys on that team. So I'm watching, when you're watching Vince, you are understanding this guy is bigger than North Carolina. He's the guy in a college game that gets about 12 to 14 points. But you like, he has no business out here on this court. Yeah, for sure. He's out here, this is just straight up. He's just straight for the conditioning. And when he gets to the next level, whoever gets him is going to be is going to be special. So, you know, for me and for all of us, it's something about. It's something about basketball when a guy can literally 
when you really look at him and you think he's flying. You're like, what the fuck? How did he just do that? And Vince was that guy. Vince was that guy where you like, if he get one dribble inside that three-point line, you better move. Even in college, right? Even in college. <laughs> you better move or you're going to be on the poster. And every, for a kid like myself who started to find his way with some athleticism, you looked at Vince like, damn, I ain't going to be able to get to that point. But if I can get half or three-fourths of it, you know, yeah. then I'm doing something right. So, and I didn't even know the passion of Canada or Toronto at the time. I had no idea. I just knew that what he was doing was something that um, the game really, we seen Mike fly, we seen Doc fly, and, and, and Dominique, we seen him you know, fly, we seen Clyde Drexler fly. But Vince took kind of, he took it to another level when you talk about flying. Yeah. We, hadn't, we hadn't seen nothing like that. For sure, and like, I mean, you know, I guess for you, Drake, being able to see a guy like that flying and being able to inspire a whole generation, how did that feel being a kid in the city, you know, trying to inspire what you're trying to inspire, but being able to see a guy with Toronto across his chest mean this for basketball? For me, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't play ball, so, you know, to hear Bron talk about sort of the, the technicalities of it is, is amazing, you know, like to hear the, the actual admiration for the, the, the craft. I mean, we all, watch, we all watch greatness, right? So, it's, yeah. you know, when you get to witness that, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty evident. But for me, it was, it was different, man. For me, it was a time, you know, it was a time marker because when Vince was was popping in the city we had nightclubs that seemed larger than life we had celebrities coming to our city and performing that would have never been here before we had rappers and people from here that were acting like we were in new york you know people were driving different cars and starting businesses and you know he created a culture for us that we had only seen on television so um, what about that made him made you made you guys feel that way you know what I'm just saying? just because we had somebody and yeah. people were gravitating to us you know so everybody was like oh you're paying attention to that well look I got you know everybody kind of yeah. got like charged yeah. off off his off his energy yeah. off his excitement and he wouldn't shy away from it that was the other thing Vince wasn't like one of these guys that's like, oh yeah, I'm out here, but I'm gonna just go straight home and you won't, see. I mean, he was like, yo, I want you to see me. I'm gonna open a club in the city. You know, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna be in, you know, he was in music videos. Like, yeah. I think I rapped about it, but like, you know, Vince did like a cameo in like Cardinal, Glenn Lewis videos. Like that to me was crazy because those were guys that just, I didn't know if they could go that far at that time. I don't think any of us thought we could go that far at that time. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you know, we got Jay-Z performing in like a parking lot for Rock the Carabana, which like we had never heard of in our life, but they just created an event around our city because we just had excitement. We finally had something, you know, and that's kind of what I talk about when I, or that's kind of what I mean when I, when I say like, you know, when you give this city something, they're gonna make it into everything for sure you know for sure that's you know it's funny you say that man it's like one of the main things that for me as an athlete toronto made me feel welcome feel special you know because you i would definitely notice a difference i'm here people will recognize me show love and everything you go to the states it's a little different you know and it was always one of those strange things where my family and friends would come in town and they'd be blown away just by how many people would show up at an appearance or at a game or just sign up, you know, line up for autographs and stuff like that. And it made me, it's kind of a weird thing. I mean, you know, one of my friends jokes called me Michael Jackson and stuff, so I could only imagine for you, well, you, you know, how. Look, you look like Blade right now. <laughs> You know what I like where this is going. 
I was ready for this. I was hoping this would happen. <laughs> you remember when Eddie Murphy used to do the vampire movie? <laughs> <laughs> vampire Brooklyn? You look like Toronto? vampire in Brooklyn right now. You don't like my... No, this, I love it. What is it to... It's Which part B, is it? It's the double B's. With double the, B's? That's what I'm going for, though. With the knee length. Yeah, I'm going for the, you know, we taking blood. <laughs> I love it. I'm trying to put out there. Is it working? It's working. Awesome. Yeah, you're a legend. Yeah. Big time. And I like the, you know, the one chain, you know, small medallion. Set up. Very Marvin Gaye. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Turtleneck. Thank super you. Super dope. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you you know, Brian got. <laughs> Why do Brian, I get thrown in this? Yeah, I want to Brian got three crests. Uh, why do I get thrown in this? Is it, what does each one mean? I mean, you know. Uh, I don't uh, uh, Toronto, it couldn't Ontario. couldn't just be one in the center. It couldn't be Canada. one big one. It couldn't, like. The three crests is the <laughs> Carter effect. <laughs> yeah. Perfect segue. Yeah. So we're doing, uh, you know, you guys are doing this film about this uh, moment in time, about this guy. How is it to be able um, to, one, uh, have the means and have the vision to, to creatively put together something like what we're about to see? Because for one, I mean, me as an athlete and as a black man, to, to you know, let's be honest, Toronto International Film Festival doesn't have a lot of color in it. You know, and if it does, it's probably something that doesn't fit this genre. How does it feel to be able to give back in this kind of way uh, and yeah. be creative at the same time? You got to give, we give all the credit to Vince, first of all, because he is the guy who, at the end of the day, is responsible for this film even coming together. I mean, without his passion for the game, without what he was able to accomplish both on the court, but also to be an inspirer all the people that was here in Toronto at the time, the film wouldn't be able to even be possible. Um, but to go to the surface of it, for myself and for Drake, we have creative minds. And, and yes, we know, we know what our money maker is and we know what we do, but our minds are, our minds are beyond what we do. And we are blessed to have outlets and people that allow our minds to be able to create opportunities like this and to be able to bring it to the people. So um, I think that's what ultimately it, it comes down to. And to give you another event story one more time before I give the, the mic, no pun intended, to Drake, um, Vince had kids actually believing that they can jump if they put on a pair of Nike shocks. Very true. <laughs> I, did I have a pair? You had a pair? I absolutely you had the white and green. I had white. No, you, I had everybody white didn't green. have a pair. Everybody had a pair. I didn't I, have a pair until I, I got listen, drafted. I had a pair. Listen, if you, Vince, no, but Vince really had, had you believing yeah. that the shock technology <laughs> in those shoes would <laughs> make you jump 100%. like that. No, 100%. There's, it's not a lot of, you got, you got MJ Air. Yeah. And make you believe air. Yeah. You got Vince with shock. You got cross trainer with Bo. You, you know, you got a little something with me, but I ain't. This ain't about me. Yeah, we, see, we, we double air over here. 360 <laughs> airbag plugs. We need plug. three straps. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, like, we ain't here. We ain't here. But he really had aggressive. you believing. <laughs> <laughs> he really had you believing that, man. Yeah. He, he really had you believing that. What was now, your first pair, though? What was your first pair? Mine was the the black, that, yeah, the, the black, black the silver, the raptor color. Yeah, raptor's color. The, the shock was. I didn't in, get them to the twos. The shock White was in and silver. Were they in your locker when you got drafted? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah look. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want, Chris? The first thing I want. Anything I can want, I want the right and wear. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Make it happen. Yep. Yeah. You know, what's so funny. I remember like. Um, it was it was all that, and then there was another shoe at the time. Like they were trying to sell. This was like before, like people really had like uh, capability to like research don't tell stuff. Me, don't tell the strip shoes. You remember like they used to sell the shoes that you used to be able to like dunk yeah, better in. Yeah, the strip shoes. Yes. All white. Yeah. With the but like they said, the like yeah. they yeah. said, and Vince was like, "I'm gonna strip these down. I'm just gonna give you <laughs> yeah, just that's literally. Just right. I'm gonna give you two pieces of plastic on each side." <laughs> Dunk like me. Straight up. Um, yeah.